into a fancy unboxing of a fancy pen in a fancy box that you can't see because it's in a fancy sleeve. Oh crap, it's poking out a little there. So sneaky. Anyway, uh, this pen is actually fascinating because I have unboxed pens and reviewed pens and I've used pens from this brand, but I have never unboxed, used, or reviewed a pen from this series from this company. So I'm gonna give you a hint. It's by this company. <laughs> okay, so sneaky. Um, first of all, thank you to Applebaum for trusting me with this pen and for loaning it to me so that I could share it with you and review it because it's kind of fascinating because as I said, I've never done this before. So this is gonna be fun. It's gonna be like an adventure for me and for you. It's gonna be an adventure for both of us, like a, like a dual adventure. Whatever you want to call that. I'm going to have some coffee. Mm, mm. Okay, so let me tell you about the pen. Because it is kind of fascinating. And it's a whopper. That way. Like, wow. Wow. The pen will be presented to you in this box. And you're going to be like, hmm, see that? That's a pretty boring box. That's okay. Because this box is just a outer sleeve to actually protect the real box inside. Thank goodness for that. Because this box... The actual sleeve is not as tough as the outer sleeve. Holy smokes. The pen is the Mont Blanc Patron of Art, homage to Hadrian, limited edition 4810. So this is the, it pains me to say this, but this is the inexpensive version of this pen because there's also a more limited version of like 888 pieces, 888 pieces, 888 pieces. And I'm, I don't even want to tell you what the cost of that one is. So this one, it's a lot. And there's like another one. It's ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, like 10,000 or so, because this one, I'm just going to give you a rough price because it may vary depending on where you purchase it, etc. cetera. Um, but you're looking at like 2,500 us for this pen. Okay. And this is the inexpensive version. So like, my watch is giving me like a heart rate monitor panic. It's like tachycardia because that's what happens when you see the price of a pen, right? Okay, so let's talk about the pen and let's do let's do some details about the pen so you know what's going on because as I said, this is the first time I've done a patron of art and I was like, to be honest, I actually had no idea what that meant from Mont Blanc. Now I have seen the patron of art pen before, uh, like a couple years ago, it was the Guggenheim and um, I like the Guggenheim because there were paw prints on it. I'm a child. I like animals. And so I had to look it up. I was like, what is the patron of art? So let's, let's discuss that for a bit, okay? Um, Mont Blanc, in 1992, they started the foundation d'entreprise Mont Blanc de la Culture. Wow. Uh, the idea was to support and protect the contemporary arts. So every year they create a limited edition fountain pen or limited edition series of fountain pens that is in the style of a single patron of art. So they say, there are many engagements between art and culture where the individual and creative spirit of people comes alive. Beautiful choice of word. Literature, theater, music, performing art, no, performing and visual arts, these highest expressions of human existence inspire us and are manifest measures of civilization. That might be debatable, but that's okay. Uh, it's always been an understatement for Mont Blanc as a brand rooted in the culture of writing to actively engage in the promotion of arts and culture. So the promoting spirit of Mont Blanc is expressed most strongly in the Mont Blanc Arts Patronage Award. Um, so, okay, there's like a whole bunch of details about like independent juries, eminent personalities, like we don't need to know all that stuff because this particular pen is the homage to Hadrian and I'm gonna talk about Hadrian in one second. But the, uh, the Mont Blanc de la Culture Arts Patronage Award continues to write an annual connecting story of history and the future that began more than 2,000 years ago. So, wow. Beautiful. I, I like what they're doing in that they are um, like helping us remember the history and culture of writing. That's important. Of course, <laughs> the price of this pen makes it pretty inaccessible for most of us. That's okay though. So the pen itself, um, as I said, homage to Hadrian, uh, Emperor Hadrian. Hadrian was one of history's most powerful and respected rulers, known as a great emperor of peace and prosperity. Starting in 117 AD, Hadrian ruled for 21 years over an empire spanning 
three continents. Perhaps Hadrian's most striking architectural legacy is the Pantheon in Rome. To be honest, I didn't even realize that. Uh, with its spectacular, unreinforced dome and the imposing columns of the portico, each carved from a single block of stone procured from Egypt. Uh, a country Hadrian was especially impressed by. So, fascinating. Uh, he erected the city Antonopolis on the banks of the Nile in remembrance of his friend Antinous, Antinous uh, who drowned at that spot. So, like, they put a lot of thought into the pen design. I'm going to show you the pen. We're going to talk about bits of it. But, um, you know what? Let me show you the... Um, let, me, let me unbox. Then we can talk about the pen because the bits that I'm going to talk about are, like, in there. So, the box. I showed you the sleeve that's going to protect your box. That's actually strangely important. Uh, the box itself is... It's pretty simple. Just, like, cardboard. Uh, it's got an artistic representation of Medusa in red. The rest of it is like gray and white with also an artistic representation of a typical perception of or like Roman decor. It's pretty. It's very classic, very classy, very simple. Usually like Mont Blanc is either like too boring or too wild. And I think this is a nice in between. So the box itself is relatively slim um, it's lacquered it's pretty heavy um, the pattern on it okay I remember what the pattern was for but now I've forgotten because there's so many things in my head about this pen uh, the pattern is the extravagant decor extravagant decor of the Villa Adriana Hadrian's enormous summer and retirement villa outside of Rome it's the inspiration for the winding circular decoration okay so you'll see this decoration on your box you'll also see it on your pen inside oh wait before we get to inside there's a little plaque here that says Mont Blanc homage to Hadrian limited edition with the number I'm not gonna tell you the number but it's 4810 is the max that it will be so inside your pen's gonna come in a fairly thick plastic sleeve that I had to cut open. And it's in a, like a nice solid foam bed. It smells delicious. It's, it's like weirdly solid and kind of nice. Like, I like that. It's pretty elegant, very simple, very classy, very clean. And at 2,500 US, I would, I would hope for that. So that's the box itself. I actually think that makes for a really nice display. Like if you were to leave that on your desk or something, very nice, very pretty. It would have been really cool if they had thrown in like a bottle of ink with this, you know, at that price, or like 10 bottles of ink. So I'm not gonna show you the pen yet because it came with this booklet, this stuff. To be honest, it's worth reading this because you'll learn a lot about the collection that you have purchased your pen from, but also about the inspiration in the pen. Uh, this is your service guide. If you are unfamiliar with pens, and even if you're familiar with pens, this is worth reading because it'll tell you about Mont Blanc's service. Uh, it tells you on how, like, how to clean your pen, how to use it. This is fascinating. On flights, the fountain pen must be filled and stored nib up. <laughs> That's like weirdly useful information. Uh, it tells you about how to use your piston, and once you have inked it, to empty four to six drops. Did you know that? And then it tells you to wipe your nib after. That's amazing, actually. Uh, caring for the surface. What else? Natural, naturali. Your limited edition writing instrument is crafted from materials of exceptionally high quality. So in this particular case, it's got stone from the in the barrel. You haven't seen the pen yet. Mm. I'm just dragging it out, making it torture. Selection of the perfect nib. If the nib is not a perfect match for you, Mont Blanc Customer Service offers a free nib exchange for up to six weeks after purchase. Uh, for limited editions, the nib exchange is free of charge for up to one year after purchase. Please note that this free service only applies if the nib is still in mint condition. That's actually very useful to know, and that means don't spring your nib upon receiving it. Uh, engraving service. Mont Blanc International Guarantee, how to obtain service, what is not covered, etc., etc. So I think most of us dismiss this kind of stuff when we buy a pen, um, but it's actually <laughs> pretty useful. It, it is useful because um, sometimes we're like, what do, I, what do I do? I don't like my nib, I don't like the pen, there's something wrong with the pen, what do I do with it? Anyway, 
Also comes with this booklet. This is the booklet I was reading from. This tells you about the limited editions and it's in multiple languages. Also talks about Hadrian a bit. We're gonna go on a bit more about that. And at the back, there is the International Guarantee Certificate, which should be stamped and signed by the certified or certified by the master craftsman of the Mont Blanc artisan Atembier. And it is. <laughs> Thank goodness. So let's look at the pen. Let me show you the pen quickly because it's a whopper. That is a whopper of a pen. It's pretty heavy. Um, I'm thinking about this. I'm like, is this the kind of pen that I would buy? Like, this is not the kind of pen I would buy because it's a little too wild for me. Like, not wild, but it's not a pen I would stick my pen case and carry around, and I'm not a collector. So, personally, I wouldn't buy it, but there's a whole lot of stuff going on here that makes it pretty interesting. And it's, it's like, solid. It's pretty large. Like, that's a, that's a substantial pen. My hand is, like, six inches, so it's, like, it's about six inches. And um, there's, like, so much detail on this. It feels really good. <laughs> so let's talk about the detail, shall we? The impressive... I'm not gonna... I'm gonna hold on really tight. The impressive Pantheon is the inspiration not only for the Egyptian basalt of the cap and barrel, that's the stone, but also for the shape of the gold-coated cap top and cone recalling the dome of the Pantheon with its gradations. There are rings that are doing stuff. They're really sharp. While the center of the cap top is decorated with the Mont Blanc emblem in black and white, precious resin. Yep. There's no mother of pearl here. I could have put that in stone, though. That would have been really cool. Um, we've talked about the winding circular decoration. So you can't really see here. I'm going to show you all of these parts in more detail when we move the camera down. Um, there are medallions on here. And... We got the clip, it's got some shape of a ripe wheat sheaf, the main attribute of the goddess Dem Demeter. And the handcrafted gold nib is decorated with the Hadrianic Phoenix with a halo and laurel leaf in an artful engraving. Now, when I actually do the talk part, I, I, met, I said it was a peacock. I'm an idiot, whatever. I hadn't read this part yet. <laughs> so disregard that, it's actually a phoenix. But anyway, this is the pen. It is not a colossal pen when it's uncapped. Most of the size and weight is in the cap this thing is like a murder weapon seriously nice pen it's fascinating <laughs> i just wanted to share it with you because it's so expensive and most of us like myself will never be able to afford this and the most we can do is enjoy seeing it so that's what i'm trying to do for you and if you are interested in it like at least you have an idea of what to expect you'll know what you're going to get if you're spending this kind of money now, just some quick details. The nib is 18 karat gold, available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, double broad, oblique medium, oblique broad, piston filler, screw cap, stone body, cannot be posted. There's so much stuff. So let's tilt the camera down. Let's look at the details of this pen. Um, hopefully so far you have found this utterly fascinating. And if you haven't, well, next part's utterly fascinating. So I will see you in a second. Okay, goodbye for now. Okie dokie, here is the other portion of this video. So um, we can we kind of discussed the details already, but let's go into more detail because now you can see it in its full size glory. Um, so first of all, well, I guess we might as well start at the top. The finial is just precious resin, so you're not getting one of the pretty mother of pearl tops, which is okay. It's just what it is. And um, the the cap top up here and the cone is inspired by Roman buildings that Hadrian commissioned. So the shape, there's like extra rings on here. Um, it's actually kind of sharp, but that's okay. Um, the cap and barrel, you can see it's like this like deep black, gray stone so it's a G egyptian um basalt rock the clip is in the shape of a sheath of wheat i actually really like the clip a lot i think that's pretty cool um the uh the the pattern this pattern that i was mentioning like the uh rings they are inspired by a decoration used in the roman empire with reference to the roman god yanis and the cap the center band there are two medallions that are engraved into this um 
One represents the Greek hero Antinous. Antinous? Antinous? Anyway, sorry. And the other is an artistic representation of Medusa, which is probably this one based on that hair. Uh, no, this one. There we go. And so that's pretty cute. The um the clip up here oh, sorry the top of the cap here says something that i can't read um i don't even know where to start adeptus imperium ad prisium si statim morem instituit so no idea what that means and i'm sure you could find that if you were going to look for it so let me see what else we got here the back is it's got that same like interesting engraving it's kind of nifty the back the this thing has the same as the top of the cap and you got the same engraving on here i believe let me see no it's a different one. Oh god i'm gonna have to try and read this um oh jesus Ter terra rum passi op Param impendi attende parobum. Parorbum. Okay, shut up. Don't laugh. I don't know what I'm reading. I don't know what it means. And that's all I'm going to tell you about that. Uncapped. The section still has the coating on it. Like, I haven't peeled that off because it's not my pen. Um, but it is a metal section. And the nib detail... It is an engraving, and it is really cute. Let me, let's take a closer look at it, just so you can see it there. It's pretty cute. Um, it's got the peacock, flamingo, what is it? It's a peacock, right? Yeah. So, there you go. So, just a medium nib. Um, nothing terribly exciting in terms of nib size. Like, I'm not super excited about that, but whatever. Um, it's not my pen, it's just on loan, so it's all good. And that's pretty much it for the details of the pen. Like, what do you think? I mean, it, it's it's not the kind of pen that I would buy. Like, I prefer more, like, pen-looking pens. My favorite so far has been the, um, uh, the Homer with the horse. But, um, like, it's pretty. Like, it's nifty. It's definitely noticeable with all the gold on it, like, the gold coloring. But I think the rock body is pretty nifty. So, and it performed pretty well, like, I have no complaints about how it wrote. Not my favorite writer, because I prefer wetter, broader, juicier nibs. Let's get that focus there. Nope. There we go. Okay. This is out of box. All I did was flush it. Um, I did nothing else to this pen. It's not been modified in any way. Um... So, yeah. Oh my god, my handwriting is horrid. I'm writing around a tripod and looking at the screen, so it's kind of delayed and it's really confusing. Okay. We got an 18 karat gold medium nib the ink that I selected is perhaps not the most exciting matchy ink for this pen but because it's not my pen and because it costs a small fortune um, I wanted to make it really easy to clean out of the piston it is Peve Ackermann Delft's Blau washable blue I use this for pretty much all of my um, expensive pen reviews because they don't belong to me typically. Or if I borrow a pen from a friend, I use something that's washable because then I can flush it out and not feel bad about it. So in terms of performance, it is actually a pretty decent writer. No skips, no hard starts. This has been sitting for about two weeks and it still writes. Um, the cap actually seals pretty well. It doesn't have that really nice stopper feeling. It's kind of, like, it does stop, but it's a bit gritty, but it does seal well enough that it doesn't dry out. Um, it's a stiff nib. 
could squeeze a tiny bit of line variation out, but it's basically a stiff rider. So don't expect much in that regard. You can use it as a reverse rider. Surprisingly, it's pretty pleasant. Um, so like this particular nib works out quite well. And that's pretty much it. Um, just wanted to show you the pen in a bit more detail, show you the nib, because of course, in this case, we want to know if it's going to write. And it does. Pretty pleasant writer. Um, I'm, I'm quite satisfied with it. And at, what is it, 2600 US, it darn well better write. Right? Am I right, guys? Am I right? See what I did there? Anyway, <laughs> I hope this was useful to you. Thank you so much to Applebone for loaning me this pen. Um, I'm going to send it off to the next person shortly. It's not going to be me. And I hope you enjoyed, found it useful, etc., etc. Um, I am Gourmet Fan, gour Gourmet Fans, Gourmet Pens. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and Instagram as such, and also as Toronto Pen Company, where I do fun stuff over there. So check me out, and if you did enjoy, please like and subscribe. I would be super grateful for your support. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a lovely day, and we will see you next time.